Hello and welcome to Viewpoint. We're joined today by Irena Karpa, a writer, a journalist and also a singer. Uh, Irena, many, many thanks for joining us. Hello. <laughs> yeah. um, you all just come back from Europe. You've been part of the Meridian Chernovitz Poetry Festival there. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about how that, how that was. What, what were you presenting at the festival? We were presenting different things, so we, I joined an international part of it. So we covered French-speaking countries mostly. It was Belgium, Luxembourg, and France for okay. me. Okay, we ended up in Frankfurt. Uh, because you speak French, you're yes, a French I speak, speaker. Yes, I speak yes. French, and we had a great French translation thanks to Irina uh, Dmitrish and Ihor Chocholak. Because uh, you know, it's it's always a tricky question what to choose for a foreign auditory. You yes, know, yeah. Because it's one thing that work here. Yes. For for example, when you discuss uh, some funny things from 90s, but obviously people in France, they did not live through that experience. No. But still, I, I prefer reading something with humor. And um, so I, I had two subjects. One was like very funny one about a migrant worker in, in, in Paris. So this actually was a real story. The, the girl from my little town. She was champion of Europe uh, in uh, like a uh, free fight, you know, so but she worked in a uh, construction uh, in construction sector in there. So in, pa uh, in Paris. In Paris yes. yes. So that was like, OK, it was probably politically incorrect story to tell. And some uh, people were offended, said like, no, there are Ukrainians who are painters. And said, of course they they are, you know, right. because but the, every people, every person has a has, has its own or her own story, yeah. which is worth being discussed. And like, especially when some some kind of, um, you know, like an ordinary story. Absolutely. It's not always glamorous. Yes. I mean, exactly. Go, so, yeah. You know. So this is a social social issue and yes. plus this is pretty ironic sometimes you yes. know because Ukraine didn't really care about such like sporty or even winners so like they're forced to go and find some like a pretty rough job outside yeah so yeah. and you and know how did the French react to this I mean I'm sorry they they tend to think were they sort of slightly offended they thought their country is you know so great no, they and, were laughing you know it all depends on your sense of humor and on your self-esteem you know when you have no problem with that you can laugh on you over yourself yes. because it was also about this like paper marriages and things like uh. this Things that happen, but they are not supposed to be discussed in like academic uh, <laughs> ambience and stuff like this. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but th that worked. And another piece of, of a text, a text I was reading that was about volunteers because uh, it's hard to discuss war subjects right now since it's like your attitude towards, for example, the soldier is a hero today and tomorrow you find out he was like uh, interfered in some crimes, like torturing or whatever. You know, so you do not want to take this one single point of view, and then you you will appear as a full tomorrow so I'm, I'm pretty cautious about those things uh, in the meantime I know like this real contemporary heroes are volunteers because Ukraine survives on their shoulders for more than two years by now absolutely so this is you sorry you're talking about the um, for example from the Maidan this was sort of yes. late 2013 yes. when the protest started in yes. central Kiev and exactly so that was all volunt I mean Obviously volunteering and, and now the, yeah. I mean people who support army who support yes. orphans of those who were killed yes. in Maidan or in the war and those like uh, who help injure people in the hospitals because like these are people who do massive work yeah. so this is why I don't even change names of those people because I really think they are deserved to be discussed and to be known to be seen much more than any pop star or movie star or whatever because they yes. are like uh, yes. this is just something that never happened before in here and this is the thing that makes big difference between you Ukraine and any other country in the world because we do not put too many too much expectations on the government or on the like uh, uh, foreign helpers but this is like people to people inside yes. of Ukraine so uh, this is I'm very proud to present yes. outside of Ukraine. Uh, were you surprised at all by the amount of volunteerism that there has been since since everything yes. began? Yes yes since we had that you know moya hata skraju thing I don't know how to translate that but mm -hmm. it's like this is not my business yeah. I'm, oh, I'm gonna okay. yes yes yeah. but and this is like this huge amount of solidarity between yeah. people who are pretty individualistic in Ukraine, yeah. which, is, which is funny. But, but that culture has has grown up I think, yes. as, a, as a reaction to the 90s, as a reaction to communism. After, after the collapse of communism, exactly, people yes. wanted really their own space. And their own have, space, have their, their own big fans. And you know, so like as soon as my house has like pretty nice things, I yeah. don't care about don't really care my, about. my yeah. neighbors. But yeah. this thing changed, you know, my done yeah. really changed that yes. psychology a lot. So you cannot be happy when the person next to you suffers, you know, no. in the misery. So you need to do something yeah. so you feel happier yourself because you changed the world just a 
little tiny bit, but you did it. It also, I think, it was interesting to know your view on this as a, as a writer. It also brought together Russian and Ukrainian-speaking Ukrainians. And I think um, someone else recently told me that um, people started to realize that you can be a Russian speaker and also love Ukraine. Um, do you see that? Is that for you? Is that true? Or did you never see that? division well, at all. That's, it's, uh, that it's, it was really symbolical that uh, one of the first victims uh, in Maidan, they were not Ukrainians and not even Russians. That was Armenian and it was a Belarusian guy. Uh, so it really showed that it doesn't really matter what, which language you will speak. It's just the way of the matter of, of your thinking, you know, so that's that's when Ukraine became political nation, nation finally. Yeah. And uh, lots of uh, guys from right sector, they're Russian speakers, and yes. lots of those, and, and like finally this is Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine and glory to heroes. It sounded in all languages, okay, including Russian. So mm -hmm. that exists. And for me, of course, on one side, I understand that if all the nations spoke mainly Ukrainian language. This is another kind of like uniting the people. But on the other hand, it showed me like, wow, you know, even though we speak different languages, this, this is like the, the same mind and the same solidarity. Yes. That was important. So I, I look at these things much easier than I did before. Yes. I'm still Ukrainian speaker in my day to day life, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, and I still communicate pretty freely and normally to someone who speaks Russian back to me, you know, so sure. I don't see any problem. The same with my kids. They are only Ukrainian speaking kids in their little kindergarten, but their teachers address in Ukrainian towards them. So they, you know, so this is not a problem nice. in here, which is also a funny thing because in, in other countries people switch, like in Belgium, I think you either speak Flamand or you speak French. But it's, I don't know if it happens that people speak Flamand and reply in French. Uh, but in okay. Ukraine, yes, it's quite one normal. speaks Russian, another speaks Ukrainian. Yes. And that's probably also something that should make Mr. Putin pretty angry that like you don't really have the any proof of that uh, picture of evil nationalist who right. like you know who who pretends he don't doesn't understand um uh, Russian. No. It's it's a bit different matter outside of Ukraine, you know, when people tell, but no, but you speak Russian in Ukraine, so you should start over again, you know, and, and, and explain, like, there are some different parts, yes. but there is Ukrainian language, so this is, again, like, this that, cultural do diplomacy. That, do you see that as part of your work as well, to sort of go to Europe, to France, places like this, and to actually explain a little bit more the subtleties of, yes, of life here? Yes, and it's pretty hard, especially when it goes about French, France, because uh, we know about this uh, massive Russian lobby and massive amount of money that's been put since the beginning of 20th century into Russian propaganda. Mm. It's like uh, starting with uh, Mr. Diaghilev and his seasons in South of France when he promoted Shalapin or Bolshoi Theatre okay. and things like that just yes. to show the world that there's something more than drunken Kozaki and <laughs> vodka and, and Kokoshniks and, and stuff <laughs> like this. Well, unfortunately, we didn't have such uh, possibility for Ukraine because it was also under different empires and it's like and we had actually laws against Ukrainian culture, literature yeah. uh, and language. We had repression against uh, like in intelligent people and people, yeah. creative people. So this is a very complicated situation in the past, though I'm pretty against that victim mind like, oh, we are so poor because yes. we, we are yes. poor, we suffered. So this is the pretty good chance to change the perception of Ukraine. Yeah. So now this is an opportunity. World. So this is now an opportunity exactly. to see this as yes. like a, sort of, um, you know, a new starting point for Ukraine to, to grow and a new generation, I think, to get out exactly. into Europe and there to really show There is a new generation themselves. of designers, of yes. poets, of writers, of artists, of, uh, of uh, actors. Yes, and you would attribute yes. this to the Maidan, specifically? Uh, no, to Maidan, of course it was, uh, like, I think Maidan gave a boost to that, mm -hmm. but it, it's, a, it's still a process. Of course we have less interesting things than you would find in Berlin or in Paris but still there is there should be uh, the point to begin or to continue because we have lots of interesting artists and mm -hmm. some of them are known outside of okay. Ukraine which is great. Irina I'm very sorry mm. we only have just about 30 seconds left yeah. so you're about to hopefully you're going to go to France for a new project to head up the um, cultural 
uh, office there for Ukraine. Um, so your mission there is going to be to help to grow and to spread, you know, Ukrainian yes, artists to, and to Ukrainian culture. Yes, to promote Ukraine, like positive image of Ukraine, to yeah. show that we are we are strong. We are much more than just a war, and that we have things to show, and we have most of all things in common with Europe. So this is why I will focus in like mutual projects between France and Ukraine. So it really exceeds those uh, frames just for us, for ourselves, for diaspora. We need to show that Ukraine exists to the outside world, to the French, to people who will be interested, who will come to Ukraine to explore more. So this will give boost for our country in the future. Brilliant. Well, many thanks, Irina Karpa. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. You're watching Viewpoint. We've been joined by Elena Karpa. She's a writer, a journalist, a broadcaster. And you're watching Ukraine Today. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of Viewpoint.